In this video of JavaScript, we are going to cover arrays. In computer science, array is basically a data structure which allows us to store multiple values in a single variable. Yes, earlier we have read that it is not possible but the way to do this thing is actually a bit different. Here, when we will define such variable, that variable will actually behave like a collection. And in that particular collection, there will be a number of memory blocks would be defined. How many memory blocks? That we will define while defining the arrays. That means when we will define the array along with the definition, we will specify the number of blocks which we want and after that we can start storing the value in each of those element blocks. And since as you can see, it stores a fixed size sequential collection of elements. That means it is a fixed size. The size which you will specify by the time of creating the array later you will not be able to change that. And if you will try to store values more than that your program may get terminated abnormally. So make sure while defining the array you are specifying a handsome amount of size which will not cause any overflowing. Now you have defined the elements, number of elements of an array and after that you can start storing the values into that. Whenever you want to access a specific element block from that list of array blocks, you have to pass the index as whenever you create an array, the index of each memory series starts with a 0 to 1, 2, 3 and so on. For example, if I have defined an array of size 5, then the lower index will start with 0, then 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, whenever I want to retrieve or assign the value, I have to pass the index like that. So, here you can see there are a couple of syntaxes about writing the data, how we can start writing the uh, data or elements in an array. So here what I have done, I have taken a var fruits, fruits is the name of my array is equal to new array, alright, this new is a keyword to allocate a new and fresh memory space and start into that you can pass the elements like apple, orange, mango. So it is sequential storage, here I have not specified, specified the size, you can also do that like you can say new array 5 and then later you can assign the values. Here I directly stored the value so the first element will get stored in the index 0 then 1 and 2 and very similarly I have done here as well. So both are the valid syntaxes if I talk about JavaScript. Once you have defined the array and after that if you want to retrieve the elements in separately alright so what you can do fruits like the name of the array and then in the square brackets you can pass the index as I said earlier index will start with 0 so when you will say fruit 0 so it will give you apple fruits 1 will give you orange and fruits 2 will give you mango so let's see practically now how we can start implementing the concept of arrays so now in this implementation of arrays as you can see First of all, I have defined the array of length 5 and I have used new keyword for allocating a new and fresh space for this particular array. The size of the array is 5, that means it will create 5 separate element blocks in which you can put a specific value. And to point out those particular blocks, we can pass the index. So like here you can see the index is starting from the 0, then 1, 2, 3 and 4. So in this particular index you can assign any type of value as JavaScript is not a type safe language you can put any type of value but when we talk about array basically it is the collection so we generally make a collection of similar type here I have put the value of same types and now to read that particular array what I can do is I have just written a loop which will start from the 0 till the less than 5 that means 4 and obviously it will run this loop will run from 0 to 4 and at every time I am running this I am reading the ith index which is changing from 0 to 4 so 
and every time I'm uh, printing the value I'm breaking the line as well so let's see how this particular output will be looking like so as expected here the value from 10 to 50 is being printed you can also do the inline initialization for the array as here you can see right after the new array I have not passed the size but I have used the curly braces to initialize all the values so here I have passed five values so array is always having a static memory allocation any particular number of uh, values which you will pass here that will be the size of the array for example if I'll pass the sixth element now the length of the array is six so let's execute it till the fifth index if it is six uh, length is six the last index would be five all right so let's refresh this one and here you can see the output so as we have discussed these particular syntaxes in the uh, description also like there are various ways of initializing an array and anytime you want to read you can simply pass the index after that and you can retrieve the value when we have a number of elements all together sorting and searching are the two very important tasks that we need to do if we have a number of elements stored in an array and I want to sort them in a particular order that is either ascending or descending order I can go for the sorting concepts and here I have written a very simple program of bubble sort in which I am sorting an array in ascending order of length 6 so here in the very first line you can see I have assigned some values in an array like 7, 2, 8, 1, 3, 4 it's a random values I have put inside this and now I want to sort it out so before sorting I have just printed the value right here like this before sort and if as you know it's a sixth number of elements are there so 0 to 5 this loop is running and I'll print each and every value out there now as soon as I print it I'll start doing the bubble sort so for any successful bubble sort I need to run a loop for n into n minus one times so that is what I have done here like here it's n n is the length of the array that is six so this loop is running for the six times inner loop is running for the five times so overall it will be running at the 30 times so that is the maximum number of cycles that we have to execute for a successful bubble sort so let's see what I have done inside this particular loop so here you can see like j is started from 0 and obviously it is less than 5 so when the first time this loop would be running the value of j is 0 and j plus 1 is of course 1 so if the value of the earlier the earlier value if the earlier value is greater than the later value for example j is 0 and 1 so if arr 0 is greater than arr 1 of course in this particular case 7 is greater than 2 so what I want is I'll have to swap these two values so that 2 will come before the 7 alright that will not make it a complete sort but of course uh, the two values would be sorted because it is the ascending order so any smaller value have to come before the greater value so that is what I have done inside this like these three lines are simply swapping the values of the 0th and 1th index so the index or the value of 1th index will be here in the 0th index and the 7 which is at 0th index will come to the first index so similarly this loop will go for this uh, 5 times means 0 to 4 index would be covered and of course as you can see here in the logic I am putting j plus 1 so the last index is 5 when j is 4 so what it will be saying if arr4 is greater than arr5 that means these two values will be uh, compared and if required the swapping will take place but only in one cycle the complete sorting will not be done so to iterate this particular concept again and again I have placed it inside this another loop and it will make it show like in 30 cycles this loop will be sorted completely and after that I have printed the loop again in the very same way I have done it earlier 
So let's execute and here you can see the output like initially it was like 7, 2, 8, 1, 3, 4 and later it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. Alright. If you want to sort it to the descending order, you can simply uh, replace the greater than symbol to the less than. Now the swapping will be done when the smaller value is before the larger value. So now you can see this whole array is being converted into the descending order sorted. But by default I'll make sure like I'm sorting it in ascending order only. Now in the same array I'm going to do the searching as well. Here I'm going to apply the linear search. So for the linear search you can see like here the same array is there. Now I have taken a variable called num in which I am storing that particular value which I want to search in this array. You can also take it from the user but here I have simply taken the hard coded value. Okay but let's uh, put the user, uh, user input here. So pass int prompt enter a number to search. All right. So uh, I'll take a user input here and whichever user will g be there, uh, we'll start searching that. And to check the status, whether the number is found or not, here I have taken a variable called found, which I have initialized with false. Means by default, I'm considering like there is the value which is not found. So here inside this loop, which I'm running from zero to five, uh, I'm checking that particular value means every value of the array with this num. If I found that, I'll change the value of this found variable to true. By default, it was false means I was considering it is not found. But as soon as the value is matched, I will say the value is found and I will break means I'll terminate the loop so that I don't require to check the value again as I already found that. So here, if found means if the value is true, I'll print the docu uh, element found else element not found. So let's execute this program in the browser and see how it is running. Like 4 is the element inside the array, so it is found. If I'll enter 6, element not found since 6 is not there. Similarly, if I will enter something like 10, it's not found, 3, element found. So this is how you can implement the linear search in your array.